Welcome. I'm Ed Corba, your host today, and our topic for the next 30 to 40 minutes is Secure Prescriptions on Demand Without Preprinted Paper and CMS Lion. Our guest today is going to be Dave Murata from Troy Group. He'll be on in a few minutes. Meantime, there is some background information that you might be interested in. First of all, FormFast, Troy Group, and Hewlett Packard have all teamed up to build this product today so that we can solve many issues and problems surrounding the printing of prescriptions. And what you're going to see today is how easily any hospital can implement a safe, a secure, and a compliant prescription printing program on blank white paper. Most of all, what we're going to do later is we're going to talk about return on investment values long before this session ends. So, having said that, again, I want to welcome you. I want to remind you that we are in the very early stages of the changes that are coming with prescriptions, and we're going to talk about that today. And here's our agenda. We're going to talk about the new regulations why the new requirements were enacted. We're going to talk about the problems. But most of all, what we're going to do is try and answer the very questions that you need answered. Our issues that we're coming up with today are that very simply nearly 7 million Americans are abusing prescription drugs. Believe it or not, that is more than the number who are abusing cocaine, heroin, hallucinogens, ecstasy, and inhalants all combined. That 7 million, 7 million was just 3.8 million in the year 2000. That's an 80% increase in just six years. Our source of information for that, by the way, is the United States Drug Enforcement Agency. The U.S. Department of of justice has alleged that healthcare workers are in a real unique position to acquire and abuse prescription drugs. While many offenders steal drugs while they're working, others steal prescri prescription pads and write illegal prescriptions for friends. Our government went into one U.S. city with their drug diversion unit and they had 200 and 50 felony arrests in one year. And one-third of those arrests were doctors, nurses, hospital workers. There were 83 of them who went to jail. So let's begin our event today. And what we're going to do is we're going to introduce Mr. Dave Murata. David, welcome. Ed, good afternoon, and thank you very much. Good afternoon to all of our listeners. Uh, we certainly appreciate your time today. Uh, we'd like to start by explaining a little bit to you about exactly um, what's brought you here today, and more specifically, what is, uh, what is it that Troy, Hewlett-Packard, and FormFast can uh, do to help you solve this very challenging workflow problem? Um, the main reason you're here today, as Ed mentioned, was because there are new security requirements uh, prevented, presented by the CMS, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, uh, newly regulations that have been enacted that have called for the enhanced security of the issuance of prescription printing or prescription issuance. So we're going to talk to you a bit about exactly what those new requirements are and more specifically uh, how the solution that we're here to present today uh, will address those. We'll go ahead um, and continue on, Dave. Oh, thanks very much, Ed. The number one reason, of course, is that the drug diversion programs and the prescription abuse programs amount to about a $50 billion per year issue. Uh, this is one of the main driving forces, as we're all aware, that's causing health care expenses to just absolutely soar. Uh, one of the other side effects of this problem is the issuance of handwritten prescriptions uh, amounts to almost 400,000 errors issued every year by pharmacists when using handwritten prescriptions. So obviously that's a major concern as well from a patient care standpoint. 
Now, with the new regulations in place, what exactly happens if a Medicare, a medic, medical or health care provider is not found to be in compliance or meeting the new regulations? Well, that's going to result in the loss of very significant funding, Medicare and Medicaid funding in this case. So let's talk a little bit about the requirements. Um, there are a number of different features that need to be implemented today, and we'll go through these one at a time, and we'll even have some printed samples to show you later. The first of which, most importantly, is preventing the duplication of prescriptions, uh, the copying, the scanning, any kind of digital rep uh, reproduction of that prescription is a uh, great risk. Because uh, the threat there is, of course, that a patient can take multiple prescriptions to different pharmacies and have that prescription filled, leading again to the drug abuse problem. So there has to be a feature built into the prescription that will prevent that act from happening. We also need to be able to prevent the erasure of key information printed on that prescription or the modification of that information. Typically, somebody might modify the patient name, take off Chris Smith and put on John Doe, or may in some way tamper with the drug being prescribed or the uh, dosage of a specific uh, drug being prescribed. We also need to implement a security feature that's going to prevent the use of counterfeit prescriptions. Obviously, that's somebody that's just creating a false prescription in their home or office uh, from scratch. So the medical professionals out there, the pharmacists, need a methodology to confirm whether this is an authentic and valid prescription, or if it is, in fact, some kind of a fraud or facsimile. So let's talk a little bit about the compliance, the CMS requirements, and how is it medical professionals are meeting that compliance today. Most common practice is to use the very expensive but commonly uh, accessible um, security paper or prescriptions, prescription paper. A number of you out there are very familiar with the cost associated with these forms. They are secure, but nevertheless, there's a lot of responsibility that goes with them. Another option might be to use a, a dedicated printer, a thermal printer most typically, for the printing of prescriptions. Or you may simply be using a, the microprint technology um, on a plain paper approach, but microprint alone uh, is a fine security feature, but by no means is it the only feature to uh, help become compliant with these re regulations. So what other options are out there right now? Well, again, we've mentioned that you can handwrite or hand issue a prescription right now using pre-printed pads. There are uh, methods used right now where you use a pre-printed form and a laser printer. Um, there's, of course, the thermal approach. Ultimately, what all of the, this, these solutions are trying to do is migrate us one day to the electronic issuance of a prescription. But right now, we're seeing that deployed on a very limited base, uh, uh, basis, uh, typically within a local hospital or even a small network of hospitals. And in that circumstance, then, you could eliminate the pre-printed document altogether. But it's just not widespread enough. And I think it's safe to say we're still a decade away from seeing any type of national or global solution from actually being implemented. Well, I can tell you, Dave, that I worked in the U.K., and I've also worked in other countries, and they all suffer from the very, very same problems that we suffer from here. I can well imagine, and uh, I hope when we're done with this presentation, uh, everyone around the world can see the benefits to implementing such a solution. So let's continue on. Uh, when you're going with uh, the solution of using a specialized pre-printed prescription form, there are obviously uh, workflow issues associated with that. And one of the most critical is the chain of custody, as we call it. That's actually maintaining a clear custody and control of these pre-printed documents long before they're ever actually issued to a patient. Uh, there needs to be someone responsible for the receipt of these brand new blank forms um, when they arrive at a hospital or a medical practice. And then when a staff uh, has to actually put them in position to be used or printed on or issued or written or what have you, uh, again, there has to be a tracking and a record of who exactly uh, has taken these. And when they are, the unused portion is returned to a vault or whatnot, that needs to be recorded as well. If you are using a printing solution, you're printing then to a dedicated prescription printing device, and you're using other printing solutions within the practice um, to produce uh, discharge papers and other types of medical records. And again, multiple devices in any one enterprise uh, can be challenging to support. 
and it also adds to the workflow and having to track down output printed on multiple devices. Well, Dave, how does FormFast, Troy, and HP kind of solve these solutions? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, actually, Ed, because uh, Troy... FormFast and HP all bring the combination and expertise of the forms management, the printing technology, and the reliability of a laser jet engine to this particular uh, vertical that's going to help actually improve the workflow and obviously enhance the security right now. So are there specific printers that have to be used, Dave? Well, there are. The, the solution that we're talking about today is based on the HP 3005 laser jet engines. And there are other engines we'll talk about as well that uh, this solution can be, can be implemented on. But going to this type of solution is going to have tremendous savings up front in, first and foremost, eliminating the need for the expense of specialized forms. It's going to simplify the process of printing these actual prescriptions because now you're talking about printing to one single device uh, and that's going to produce all of your output. It's going to produce the prescriptions. It will produce the, di produ the discharge papers and any other relevant information that a medical professional will be uh, conveying or transferring to a, a patient. It also su simplifies the support process. If you're talking about a larger medical enterprise, you obviously have an IT staff that's responsible for maintaining all of these pieces of equipment. So by combining the printing function into one device, you are then reducing the number of printers that uh, an IT staff would have to manage. And that alone is a time saver for the IT staff. Now, a question earlier of the available devices that this solution uh, would work on. I mentioned the HP uh, 3005. Troy also offers solutions based on the new HP 4015 and the 4515 printers. But you might also have a situation where we have customers right now that have a deployed fleet of these particular models already within their enterprise and would like to just enable those existing devices with the same capability. Troy does offer upgrade kits that can be easily installed by a customer's IT department um, in a very short time frame. Oh, these are the samples that we were talking about. These are. I thought it would be helpful to show you a few samples of exactly what it is that can be produced on this printer. And uh, I have some samples that will address each of the key features. So first and foremost, of course, is the, the copy prevention technology. What we've incorporated here into the laser jet is the ability for the printer to produce a pantograph. Uh, I'm sure a number of our listeners today are familiar with the pantograph technology, which is simply the printing of an image on a, on a page, but that image would only be visible if the document were in fact being scanned or copied. As you can see in the example on the right, the, when this document is copied, the pantograph shines through very quickly and says, this is in fact a copy. Now, this is an example of the microprint feature. Again, a very handy feature, but one that should be used in conjunction with uh, additional security levels here and not used just on its own. But this is addressing the prevention of copy prevention. If you notice, if you can all see this very closely on the left-hand side, under the little MP designation there, you should be able to read the microprint, microprint that is indicating this is an original document. And the feature behind this is that when you actually go to copy this document, uh, a copier or a scanner will not have the resolution to accurately capture the detail of these characters. So if somebody were to examine a and question the authenticity of a printed prescription, they would look at that microprint, among the other features, and realize, I can't read that microprint. And again, be able to confirm, at least on that level, that this is a suspect prescription, that it needs further scrutiny, there's something wrong here. Well, how about alteration prevention, Dave? Troy has implemented a solution we call TroyMark. And what that simply is, is the, again, the enabling the printer's firmware to capture key bits of information that are used to print that prescription. In this example, we've captured the patient name. And we've also captured some other um, data points in the prescription itself. And what we do on the back of the prescription is print that information, again, in a diagonal orientation, uh, across the entire back page or two-thirds of the page of the prescription. And the whole method to this is to eliminate the ease that 
uh, would come with document fraud or document alteration, where once they would have to alter just one little area that had the patient name, now they would have to actually alter the entire back page of the prescription. And if anybody's familiar with the uses or methodology used to uh, alter a printed document today, it takes uh, an acetone or a solvent of some type along with a little cotton swab and a lot of patients to try and slowly remove the printed toner on each page. And I think people will agree after you've, after you've tried to work on one small section of this printed page, you'll run out of time and patience, and not to mention you'll probably butcher the printed page pretty significantly to the point you will never try and take that prescription anywhere to be filled. You'll, in fact, give up and try and commit uh, fraud on some other prescription. Okay, but suppose, well, wait a minute. Don't you? Don't we have an optional toner that will work for that so that it will, much like checks, it will produce some type of mark, Dave? We do. Purity toner. This is a very unique feature that FormFast, Troy, and HP have brought to the marketplace that's actually been patented. And what's unique about it is the red dye that we have embedded in the toner. It's not visible to the printed document, but that dye is hidden in there. And should that toner be attacked or even touched by a solvent, a uh, nail polish remover, acetone, anything along those lines. The minute that toner is touched by it, it releases that red dye, which really kind of bursts onto the page and bleeds into the paper fibers of the prescription. And what that's going to do is make it apparent to any pharmacist very quickly that this document has been tampered with. Um, it certainly requires much more further scrutiny, um, certainly as well as the person presenting that prescription to be filled. Well, okay. We, we've got security toner. We've got alteration prevention. What about counterprint, counterfeit prevention? The requirement, uh, if everybody can view that carefully, at the bottom of the prescription where we actually list the security features that uh, a pharmacist should look for on the prescription. And it will outline very quickly exactly what features they need to look for so that they can authenticate the, the printed prescription and verify it is, in fact, the real item. All right. Yeah, let's show the uh, FormFast version of that, Dave. And I hope everybody can see that up close and personal. That's right. Now... And, or excuse me, Catherine has asked a question. She's asked, what is the cost of the Troy upgrade kit? Well, Catherine, what we would like you to do is on the end of this seminar, we're going to have a box in our questionnaire where you can fill in your name and your information, and we will provide that information to you. So please, at the very end of this conference, we sure would like you to fill out the seminar form, and if you have interest, you can place that interest right there so that we'll, we'll get it. So meantime, then, let's kind of go back over things, David, and how about talking about or at least showing them that we meet and exceed the CMS requirements? We'll gladly do so. Put together here is a, a simple uh, slide that outlines exactly what the uh, standard features are with the SecureRx solution, but also what optional um, security features you can implement as well. And I think what you'll notice by see, looking at the check marks on the right-hand column there, you've got you need to it, be compliant with at least three of the requirements. You have to implement at least three. But you see that Troy gives you four of those criteria right off the bat. Um, and if you implement the security toner, then that's five already that you've got implemented in a very simple, easy method. Uh, as you can see, there are other optional uh, security form or security level layers you can implement uh, again that require some EMR integration. But uh, we always believe that more security is better, so um, we would recommend that everybody consider each and every one of these features uh, when implementing such a solution. One of the other things, Dave, that everybody's asking for is to talk about return on investment. And we want to, I guess, caution folks because our ROI factors, I think we're going to talk about and show, um, these are going to vary per institution, per infrastructure. 
So let's talk a little bit about the return on investment. Well, we've put together our ROI um, examples for everyone to consider. Um, and if we just review the obvious factors, um, the elimination of pre-printed forms, the need and the use of a pre-printed form, gives you an immediate savings right off the bat. I mean, everybody, I think, understands that the cost of these forms can range anywhere from $0.10 cents up to almost $0.50 cents per page, whereas the plain paper solution uh, is less than a, well less than a penny a page. Um, the management of the pre-printed stock obviously becomes a, a real savings when you eliminate that altogether. There's no chain of custody to worry about anymore. And then more importantly, the workflow time savings involved. You're talking about medical professionals that have to chase down or manage the pre-printed forms. They're responsible for where they're issued and when. And not to mention these same people, if they're working with a printer-type prescription issuance method, need to go chase down on a dedicated printer where that prescription is and then go to the other printing device to get the other output they've generated. That all adds up to very significant time on a daily and monthly basis. And we've put together, again, some examples of what type of savings you would see, you know, if you're enhancing or making more efficient a nurse's or a physician's time in eliminating this need to chase down the, the output. Obviously, I touched on earlier, device consolidation is also of key importance to any of the IT staff or support staff when managing any of these printer devices. Because, of course, it's not just printers that they're responsible for. It's any other key component um, in a medical practice, computers and whatnot. That's their responsibility as well. And obviously, when you talk about the footprint of a particular printer, eliminating multiple devices and consolidating on one is saving you significant uh, space in any medical practice. What about any intangible factors? Well, I'm sure everybody can appreciate that the whole reason uh, you're in the healthcare business is because of the patient care. Everybody needs to and wants to provide the highest quality level of patient care they can. So implementing a solution like this is really an intangible ROI factor because what it's doing is it's allowing the nurse or the physician to spend really additional time with the patient and less time dealing with the technology used to facilitate that patient's visit. Again, IT managers here are going to love this solution because it eliminates the need of using a dedicated, secure type of prescription printing solution. Uh, as an example, I'm going to show you in a couple of upcoming slides here. Uh, they're actually just working with a standard output device now, and it's one source for all the equipment. Service and supplies are simplified as far as the material management goes. But you're also eliminating the potential for internal prescription fraud, because now you're not managing those internal pre-printed documents. You're managing actually plain paper, which obviously there's no risk that whatsoever. And you're also ultimately putting a hospital or health care provider in a position to eventually take the next step to, elect to e-prescribing, as we like to call it. Hey, Dave, that means that in our initial example, out of that hospital of 280 that were arrested, we take temptation away by using plain paper. We absolutely do. You're eliminating the, the potential for that altogether. Uh, and what I've also put together here are a couple of simple ROI case studies. I know you touched on earlier we would be presenting here today. But uh, I think these will give our listeners um, a pretty clear understanding of the type of uh, return they can see uh, when comparing it to uh, alternative solutions that are out there right now. And our first example is with a smaller medical practice that uh, prints approximately 40,000 prescriptions a year. This particular practice uh, went the direction of a dedicated thermal printer. Um, and some of our listeners may be familiar, may have seen this device before. This is a very small, compact type of printer, but it still requires very specialized, unique, pre-printed forms, which, again, have a pretty high cost associated with it. Not to mention that this same device, again, mission-specific, designed only for prescriptions, has a waste factor associated with it because people will mistakenly print to that device, and all they end up doing is wasting time and this specialized paper because now they have to go and reprint that output to the correct printer that they are intending to use. When you look at a secure RX solution that's implemented, you're talking about a payback, a return on your investment. In this particular case, that was less than nine months. 
Uh, not to mention, obviously, we've enhanced the workflow again, which eliminated major problems uh, that the nurses and the physicians were, were not too happy about. But again, you eliminate chain of custody, you're simplifying your workflow and the support of it, and at the end of the day, we're providing much more time with the patient and less time with the technology and the infrastructure of the medical practice. Larger RI case study for you. This is with a larger Texas hospital. Uh, they actually had uh, the need for a, a fleet of approximately 200 printers. And they were issuing, or are issuing prescriptions approximately a million and a half a year. I'd say that's a pretty sizable uh, print volume. But when you actually compare the cost of the use of a pre-printed sheet, uh, about 10 cents a sheet, you're talking about $150,000 a year expense just for the forms alone. And then, of course, you add on another $750 for the cost of a printer. So that solution adds up pretty uh, quickly. When you look at a SecureRx upgrade, and we actually that's what the solution was in this case, it was upgrading existing printers in the hospital, you had a cost of a list price, uh, which I think might go towards Catherine's question earlier, of $795 per printer. And the ROI, just based on the paper savings alone, again, we're eliminating the need for the pre-printed stock, um, gave them a 12-month payback uh, if you're comparing and basing that on the full list price. Again, chain of custody is the evil. Eliminating anybody's responsibility for managing that inventory of, of paper, simplifying workflow, and getting more time with the patient and less time with the technology there to serve the patient. All right. I knew everybody would want to see this. We've talked about this thermal printer, and this is, in fact, the, the other option that we'll see in the industry right now. It's, it's low cost. It is a roughly $550 item. It's small. It's cute. Some folks seem to like it, and it's been around a while. But, again, it uses the dedicated paper right now. Um, I think some of you can see in that image there's a key associated with it that locks that paper into the, the printer itself. That's a big concern for most support staff because, again, now you're worried about a key that somebody has to be responsible for, and as happens more often than not, people misplace keys. So if you have a device that runs out of paper and somebody can't find the key, now we're actually preventing a patient from actually receiving the prescription that needs to be issued. And, of course, the paper that goes into this printer has a bit of a curl to it because it is a thermal-based solution, so it can be a little tricky in the handling of it. Um, and folks really don't care for that solution too terribly much. Well, you know what really works great is the fact that FormFast is really universal to any system. We can work with anyone out there. Now, if I'm understanding this correctly, FormFast provides software, firmware. Troy provides their specialized fonts, the specialized toner, and all the components. And HP provides the printer. And that means that the strength of the three of us is almost immovable. Now, who can work with this type of system, Dave? Well, that's a, there are a number of different EMR solution providers out there. And the team of Troy, FormFast, and HP uh, have worked so far with the group you see listed here. Um, but that's not to say this is the only group that we would work with or support. Uh, there are, as I said, many, many other EMR options people have implemented today. But uh, this is just a quick sampling of those that we uh, have seen so far and implemented the solution with. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Let me do a quick little bit of summary of benefits here. We're going to be CMS compliant. Uh, we're going to be able to meet every need that they have on alteration, counterfeit prevention, and we're going to be able to help a hospital through risk management by being able to have an audit trail of reporting, encryption, decryption. We're going to be able to turn an ROI, which looks like in anywhere from 8 to 12 months, and we're going to be printing on plain paper. And then most of all, it's simplified for IT because they don't have to worry about trying to do tray mapping. They don't have to worry about specialized stock in the drawers. Well, it seems to me that 
basically, we're pharmacy friendly. There's no chain of custody. There's no locking trays. No having to have an inventory and having to audit that inventory all the time. And as you see, we've got plenty of other things going for us. Simplified workflow, workflow, one printer, and most of all, we have overall enhanced patient care. I don't think our end users could ask for anything more. Um, all right, now is a good time to take any questions. Um, you can place those in our chat box if you have one. Uh, let's see here. All right, we have a question from Sue McTee. She wants to know, can we use our printers? Well, definitely if you have the right model. Am I right or wrong, Dave? Nope, you are absolutely correct. The, the models that we're currently supporting are the 3005, the 4015, the 4515, and there's actually a couple of predecessors in there based on the 4250 and the 4350 series of laser jets that we have options for as well. Okay. And are there any limitations to the size of paper or paper that can be placed in? No. These uh, printers are designed to take the standard uh, paper sizes that HP already supports just by virtue of being a laser jet. Okay. And when we talk about, um, talk about these things, it means that we can operate it. Aren't we operating from an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper that's going to come out of that main drawer? Because when we use our counterfeit prevention, that's going to be printed on the bottom. Plus, we're going to have other information all over that sheet. So I guess the predominant sheet, would it be an 8.5 by 11? That is correct. That would be the standard size that we've seen implemented so far. Okay, we've got another question. Is there any discharge information for patients that automatically print with script for medications? Now, I think that comes from the form fast part. If you need that type of application, FormFast would be willing to sit here and make sure that happens. So we need you to fill out that seminar or question seminar on the end. We need you to questionnaire, excuse me. We need you to fill that out. And what we'll do is have someone give you those answers personally. All right. Any other questions out there? Is there anything you can think of? Anything you want to add, Dave? Well, I see a quick question that Doris popped up here. Uh, I think she had some technology uh, challenges that popped up in the middle of our presentation. And I think she's asking us a question about the security panel at the bottom of the form. Uh, we may want to touch on that just one more time real quickly. Doris, that's, a again, a security feature that outlines the security features incorporated into a prescription. And it's a method used for the, prescri for the pharmacist to verify the authenticity of that prescription and look specifically for the features incorporated in it and make sure they are, in fact, all present. I'm trying to get there right now to, to, so everybody knows exactly what we're talking about. You get a quick review. There it is. Is that what Doris is saying? I believe that's what we're talking about. Exactly. That's exactly it. And yeah, that that would without that information on there, you could very easily, without the combination of all three parts, very easily turn around and be very very fraudful. All right. Any other thing? Anything else you see, David? I think that's uh, that covers all the questions I've seen so far. Okay. Well, we'll go back to the end here and if there are no more questions, there are there are there we need to say a couple more things here before we go. First of all, we want to thank you all for being here today. Wait a minute, got another question. They want to yep. know do we need to use a color printer? And the answer to that would be no. Color is not a requirement of the prescription printing. Uh, process at, uh, and at this point, uh, Troy has not implemented a solution based on any of the color laser jet solutions. All right. In that case, then we've answered almost all your questions. Uh, we'd like to thank you for being here today. I'd like to thank Dave Murata from Troy. Our next seminar that's coming up, July 9th, is workflow for rack management. 
that'll be the week of July 9th. The following weekend, we're going to have a three-part series on your electronic medical record and how to prepare your forms, how to have it set up, um, many different things that you're going to need to see during that three-part series. Hold on, we got one more question. When does the CMS requirement extend to Medicare prescriptions? Do we have a date on that? Well, the simple answer to that is it it was implemented in October of 2008. Right. So they need this now. They do. All right. So, folks, if you'd like further information, please contact us at FormFast at info at FormFast.com. You can also call 1-800-218-3512 and very simply ask for more information. We'll be happy to provide it. A lot of you stayed on for the full seminar today. We'd like to thank you. And again, we look forward to seeing you on July 9th, Workflow for Rack Management. For all of us at FormFast, for Rob Harding, President, Sean Curtis, Director of Marketing, Ed Corba, Executive Vice President, John Yock, Polling Coordinator, Dave Murata of Troy Group, and we'd like to thank you for being here today. Take care and join us again.